Improving Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion in Teaching. This presentation is an adaptation of the Creative Commons licensed work, How to Center DEI in Teaching, created by Carnegie Mellon University's Everly Center. Kaleidoscope visuals are used throughout the presentation to signal the interconnected nature of diversity, equity, and inclusion, also referred to as DEI. Imagine equity as the individual elements of color and think of a pattern as inclusion and the ever-changing patterns, diversity. Begin efforts to improve DEI in teaching by reflecting on a few broad questions. What follows are sample questions intended only to start the DEI thought process. First, focus on the idea of diversity. Have you been paying attention? What learner characteristics might exist that cannot readily be seen? Do you show that you value uniqueness in each person? Could you have unintentionally discriminated against a member of the learning community you are working hard to build? Is your course attractive to diverse populations? Next, examine the concept of equity. Does your course need to expand? Should you look at achievements, traditions, histories, and perspectives that you may not have considered? Do you take differences into account? Is there an aspect of your course that would cause any of your students to feel disheartened? Will your course leave all students feeling inspired to continue on in the field? And finally, turn your attention to matters of inclusion. Does your course leave anyone out? Can all learners contribute fully? Do all learners have equal access to resources and opportunities? Do you address all learners respectfully? Do your assessments treat every student fairly? And does your course allow each student to feel valued? Now hopefully you're open to a deeper examination of specific elements within your course. Begin with your syllabus and course objectives. Did you make course expectations clear? Clear expectations help students know if they are ready to take your course. Did you include explanations for norms and standards in the discipline? Doing this helps students with different backgrounds and levels of experience develop awareness early on. Look over your course objectives. Scrutinize them in terms of assumptions you may have made or biases you may have been unaware of. Challenge yourself. Incorporate new or redesigned objectives that combine disciplinary and DEI goals. The following example illustrates how a DEI goal can be added to an existing objective and is drawn from a business course. Demonstrate inclusive interpersonal skills to participate as a member of the field in situations such as attending conferences, writing reviews, and handling confrontations. The addition of the word inclusive would open the door to a discussion around what it means to develop inclusive communication skills. Think now about how you assess student effort. Do you provide plenty of low stakes opportunities for students to practice and receive feedback? Feedback is essential if students are going to be able to assess their own knowledge in order to improve. This approach will help you as well because you'll be able to assess common struggles and make teaching adjustments. Recognize and respect different ways of knowing things. Consider developing criteria for peer feedback and give your students the opportunity to receive comments about their work from their classmates. This will cultivate an environment in which learners begin to see different perspectives and reflect on their work in new ways. Communicate high standards while conveying confidence that everyone will be able to achieve success. Affirm available supports. Design assignments that allow for iteration and revision whenever possible. This will give you opportunities to provide feedback with concrete examples of improvements students are making. 
avoid any mention of negative stereotypes or socially perceived disadvantages. An example of doing something like this would be to point out that in the past, scores for a particular math exam reflected gender differences. A statement like this could trigger a perceived disadvantage for women who are about to take the exam. A conscious fear of being exposed as a fraud describes imposter syndrome. Address this phenomenon by sharing your own growth path. Talk about any bumps in the road you experienced and let learners know of lessons you learned along the way. Promote a growth mindset and reassure students that real achievement can be attained through staying on track and doing the work. Examine your learning strategies. If you don't already have group work in your course, think about how you can add it. But do see that it is structured. Consider assigning roles and asking students to rotate roles. Provide lots of detail about what the group's final product is. Create heterogeneous groups yourself, rather than rely on random or self-selected group formations. Since group work can pose challenges for students, take the time to address equitable group processes and group work skills. Give students the opportunity to discuss challenging points within your course in small groups. Knowing they do not have to address the entire class could increase a student's willingness to voice their ideas and perspectives. Discussions can play an important role in learning support students' ability to interact successfully. Establish norms for both your interactions and student interactions within discussion forums. Offer a framework for contributions, not just original posts, but peer reply posts as well. Ensure that every member of the discussion understands that showing respect for all perspectives is an integral part of succeeding in the course. Have a plan in place for addressing problematic generalizations or assumptions that might arise in a discussion. Now, once discussions are underway, highlight submissions from a variety of students and perspectives. Ensure an individual is never put in the position of speaking for an entire identity group. Provide room for students to explain the reasoning behind statements. Always try to be careful not to assume that you know why a learner framed a particular problem or question the way they did. Remember that some characteristics of identity are invisible. Use students' names, ask for pronouns, and keep references generic. For example, use house of worship instead of church. Now dive in and take a good look at all the required and optional content in your course. Ensure that everything is accessible to all learners. Consider something like access to technology. Offer options, alternatives, and supports because all students may not be on equal footing when it comes to technology access. Be sure you do not create a systemic barrier. An example of this type of barrier would be if you decided to hold office hours or live help sessions at a specific time on a specific day each week. This could shut some learners out. Consider attitudinal barriers. These encompass everything from assumptions to biases to stereotypes and really anything that could make a student feel different or as though they are an exception. Another potential barrier stems from learner sensory differences. Sensory differences can be obvious and disclosed, but often they are not. The differences can mean that some learners may not be able to fully engage with content, resources, and activities. Examples of barriers of this type include electronic documents not properly formatted to be read by a screen reader videos that are not captioned or don't have a transcript, and fonts that are difficult to read. Acknowledge the perspectives that are implicitly valued and prioritized within your course. Look for missing perspectives and devise plans that are consistent with your course objectives to address the gaps. Show not only classic authors and examples, but also modern, diverse practitioners who use a technique or theory. Consciously include underrepresented identities in the field. Take gender, race, sexual orientation, and more into account. 
Video blogs and other digital media can provide diverse sources of content to supplement textbooks and other traditional readings. Consider recording videos with experts from diverse backgrounds as invited guest lecturers. Try to represent an array of identities when including examples, scenarios, and case studies. Let students contribute examples too. If you include images in your course, see that you include as many aspects of diversity as possible. There may be a lack of diversity in stock images, so you may need to look for Creative Commons licensed works on photo sharing sites such as Flickr. DEI efforts can be transparent. Bring the topic up and talk about it with your students. Open an anonymous discussion forum so that students can comment on areas within the course that could grow and change in order to become more equitable, diverse, and inclusive. You do not have to overhaul your entire course to improve diversity, equity, and inclusion. You do need to reflect regularly on all aspects of your course design, seek feedback from your students, and begin making thoughtful improvements.